Welcome to FX Options University, recorded live at the International Securities Exchange, the world's largest equity options exchange. Join the industry's top trading professionals as they provide insight and strategies for trading in the currency markets using FX options. FX options are a low-risk alternative to hedging currency moves in any market condition. All right, so let's, uh, let's chat a little bit here about volatility. As I mentioned, volatility is really, really important to option pricing because underlying instruments, in this case FX currency, it has volatility and has uncertainty because of that, options are given to us as a tool to manage that risk, okay? The economic purpose for options is to hedge. Now, of course, probably many people watching this presentation, you know, you're not hedgers. You're probably traders, speculators, if you will. Um, and either way is fine, but still, you know, the purpose for options is hedging, and the way that volatility finds itself in the pricing of options is very easy to understand when you understand it from the perspective of a hedger. And, you know, basically, we're going to talk a little bit more about this in a minute, but basically, you know, think of options, and I almost hate to use the example because it's, it's so used, but it's exactly right. Think of options as an insurance policy. If you're a hedger, you're long a particular currency, and you're afraid that it might go down, but you don't want to sell out that currency. Maybe you need it, you know, for some sort of physical, you know, purchase down the road. Maybe there's tax reasons. For whatever reason, you don't want to sell it, but you're afraid it might go down. You can buy a put to protect it. Now, much like someone who's buying a car insurance policy, if you're not a very good driver, you're a high risk, you probably pay a lot for your insurance. If you're a reasonably safe driver, haven't had an accident in a while, you probably don't pay a lot for your insurance. Well, options work the same way. Currencies that are more volatile than other currencies or stocks that are more volatile than other stocks or whatever the underlying instrument is, they have more expensive insurance. Their options are more expensive. And, you know, when the risk of future volatility is expected to be lower, you know, there's not as much volatility, then the price of those options, those veritable insurance policies, is lower. Hedgers or speculators, when you're involved in option pricing and you're trying to figure out, hey, which option do I buy, you know, you're going to lose volatility. Now, there's some people out there especially some high-level prop traders <clears throat> who trade in, you know, fancy offices in Chicago or New York or something, um, they, no kidding, trade volatility. You, as a hedger or as a, you know, kind of retail stay-at-home trader, speculator, you probably don't trade volatility per se, but you still use it. You use it to get edge. If you're taking a directional bet on a currency using options, great. Your biggest concern is delta, that is the directional sensitivity, but a secondary concern and a way that you can get a little bit of a head start, a little bit of an edge on each and every trade so that when it works out, you make a little bit more than maybe you're supposed to. And when it doesn't work out, you lose a little bit less than maybe you're supposed to. That's called edge, and you can get it if you make smart volatility decisions. So we'll talk more about that throughout this whole presentation, especially at the end. <clears throat> All right. So, you know, on the one hand, there may be some of you out there saying, yeah, 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 come on, Passarelli, get on with it. I know what volatility is, and to some degree, I'm sure you do. To some degree, I'm sure all of you know at least the basic level of volatility. You look at a chart of a currency and you see periods where it really kind of whips around and has big you know, daily bars and big price swings and gaps, it's volatile. And then you look at either a different currency or maybe a different period in the life of that currency 
when, you know, it's not really doing much. It's kind of trending sideways slowly, not really big daily bars or candles, whichever you look at. You know, then it's less volatile. This is, you know, this is very, very intuitive. <clears throat> and this is a very specific type of volatility that we'll address in just one second. You need to understand it at this base level, but you know what? You don't need me to, to explain that. Everyone kind of gets the basic definition of volatility. Now, as far as when we're talking specifically about Forex, not necessarily the options, but the Forex itself, you know, we know the things that cause that interest rates, politics, blah, blah, blah. But we're going to kind of take a little bit of a step back from the why. You know, you're going to work that into your forecast later. We're going to take a step back from the why it's volatile and examine more closely volatility at face value. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to, you know, we're going to look at the concept of two different charts like this. And it's very easy to say, hey, look, the one on the top, it's more volatile than the one on the bottom. <clears throat> but how much more volatile? You know, how do you define that? How do you quantify it and make that not a subjective statement, but an objective statement with data that you can use? Is it, you know, scale of 1 to 10, 5 more volatile? Is it 50% more volatile? Is it, like, you know, lots and lots more volatile? How do you quantify that? And likewise, like I was saying before, too, you know, volatility of different assets change. Sometimes a currency can we really be whipping around, and sometimes it can be just kind of sitting there really kind of boring. <clears throat> so here's how we quantify volatility and take it from just a rather subjective, you know, eyeballing a chart sort of a statement to numbers that we can use. It's called realized volatility, and here's what it is. We take the daily closing prices of a currency over a certain period of time, typically 30 days, and we find the standard deviation of that 30 days. Now, standard deviation, is, it's just sort of a fancy measurement that tells us, well, it tells us how volatile something is. It tells us basically how far apart the closing prices have been and, you know, just imagine that you're comparing two assets, one that has closing prices that, you know, one day it's, you know, 5% higher, the next day it's 10% lower, next day it's 15% higher, compared to something where, like, it, you know, it changes a half a percent a day. <clears throat> you know, if you take that figure, and then you can, you know, you can take those closing prices and turn it into a standardized figure that tells us, basically, the deviations the daily price deviations, and that's called standard deviation. Now, you know, this is intended to be a presentation for option traders. You know, I'm teaching you how to drive the car, not how to take apart the carburetor. Do they still have carburetors in cars? I'm not really sure. Um, so we're not going to get into the fancy math because, you know what, honestly, you don't need it. I don't use the fancy math. I use the end product. There's plenty of places like your broker, for example, um, where you can get all the calculated volatility you need. Thank you for participating in this week's session. Please join us again next week. Get trading ideas, exchange rates, webinars, news, and commentary. Visit www.fxoptions.com. ISE FX Options can be easily traded through all options-enabled brokerage accounts. These exchange-listed securities are cash-settled in U.S. dollars and have a European-style exercise. <laughs>